Hi, hello there ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be working on this PlayStation 4 Pro, which has been sent in because the power connector has been ripped off the board. Now, the customer that sent this console in actually left the console disassembled and I started the video and unfortunately I forgot to press record so I was recording audio but no video which is a bit annoying but these things happen from time to time so I haven't done any work on this yet but I'll just show you the note that it came with so I folded this over because obviously it's got a customer's address on it but the note that came with it basically says dismantled already power connector ripped from board taped to board so what the customer did was he left the power connector like this and taped it to the board just so as it didn't get lost or didn't fall about in the box he sent the rest of the console as well but the screws are in a bag and the actual outer casing and power supply hard drive and things like that the motherboard was inside the case to keep it safe which is good it was also screwed down with the x clamp which you know it, it kept it safe and hopefully this console still works apart from the apart from the obvious damage to the power connector on initial inspections i haven't done anything to this yet but on initial inspections this is certainly not the worst console i've seen it's certainly not the worst damage i've seen to a ps4 pro this should be a relatively straightforward repair so the first thing i did notice is the fact that we've got some signs of water damage um now the customer hasn't mentioned this so i'm assuming he probably doesn't know and he probably thinks this is normal i'm not sure but it looks like we've got some kind of corrosion on the ground pad which you know it's it's one of those things um it doesn't look like it's damaged anywhere else on the board but it is covering a lot of the ground plane around the edge and also whoops and also on the other side of the board as well you'll see that there's quite a bit of corrosion there as well it doesn't look too bad it certainly doesn't look like it's going to cause any kind of issue but what i will do before i start anything is i'm going to try and clean it up a little bit with some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush you know we don't want this corrosion to end up causing any future damage further down the line so i'm going to take a toothbrush and i'm just going to try and clean it up just a little bit just to make, well make it look a bit more presentable more than anything and then we'll go over the plan of action to tackle the damage to the power connector but like i said the power connector itself certainly not the worst thing i've ever seen i've seen a lot worse and you know this is very mild so yeah i'm quite looking forward to this one because this is a very high success rate chance and uh yeah it's just one of those things uh so these kind of things happen these accidents and the reason these happen is because if you're inexperienced with opening consoles which you know probably 99.9 .9 percent of the population are you know there's not a lot of people that know the know these inside out and know how these are and what they look like inside and if you're inexperienced with consoles then you're not going to realize just how tight that power supply is and just how fragile that power connector is and it's kind of a really bad design on sony's part really because they know full well that people take their own consoles apart to clean them we don't send them back to sony because they're overheating unless they're within the 12 months and sony knows full well that we like to service our own consoles so to make that cable so short on the power supply is is pretty annoying really because it, the amount of consoles that i see you know just myself the amount of consoles that i see with damaged power connectors because people have tried to service the console not knowing what they're getting themselves into and obviously ended up damaging it i've honestly lost count of how many of these i've actually repaired in the past couple of years and i'm starting to see it more often because you know these consoles they are getting older uh, i'm not I, I don't know if i'm honest when these consoles re was released maybe someone down in the comments can tell me um but these consoles are getting fairly old now i think they're around about four years old now and they're going to start overheating that's the thing they're going to start overheating and quite frankly people are not going to be able to send them back to sony because sony are going to charge them you know 100 120 130 pound to sort out the overheating issues and people are not going to pay that 
it's as simple as that. I mean, I charge £20 for a basic service on a normal PS4. I also charge £30 for a PS4 Pro because I have to, I have to offset some of that risk on that power connector and also it, it's a lot different to the original PS4. It's not hard but it's a bit more time consuming to actually clean out so I charge a little bit more for the PS4 Pro but £30 is still a fairly reasonable price for you know probably what's going to be an hour and 10 minutes work in total if I take my time and, and take care while doing it. So. Like I say, people are going to try and clean their own consoles out, and this is a really bad design flaw by Sony for that reason. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the actual repair. So the plan of action for this console is, this console isn't too bad. It's certainly not the worst I've seen. It's far from it. There's not a lot of damage. We do have one pad which has been pulled up, which is the left-hand pad, this one here. So this pad here has been pulled up. And this goes to this jumper here. But the thing with this pad is it is folding back down nicely. So it is lifted up as you can see a little bit. But the thing is if you press down on it. It actually goes down and sits in place. So I should be able to recreate a pad on this one. That shouldn't be an issue. I should just be able to scrape back at a little bit of this conformal coat in here. And then run a nice solid blob of solder to reinforce the actual connector itself and also to reinforce the trace because the trace is obviously damaged and it's going to need some sort of reinforcement and rather than using some sort of epoxy I'd rather just scrape back at some of this conformal coating, expose the copper and then put a nice big blob of solder there uh, because that's going to give the connector itself some structure as well. Uh, these two traces here, this one is ground, this one is absolutely fine and this one I believe might be a data, I'm not sure, um, but I believe this one might be a data pin, um, but this one is also fine, and this one here is completely missing, but that being said, this may be salvageable, um, it depends on whether I'm able to create a blob of solder, and the same as this one, just run the tweezers over it, get rid of some of that conformal coat, and then try and create a solder blob here. For this um, if I can't then I'll run a jumper wire it's not a problem it's not going to be an issue at all it doesn't carry high current and you can take a look at the trace itself the trace itself is tiny so you could get away with 0.1 millimeter jumper wire I'm going to use something a little bit bigger um, I actually use the enameled wire from old microwave motors so the stuff I use here I don't know the exact diameter of it but the reason I use this stuff is because my brother-in-law is a scrap man he collects scrap for a living and obviously salvages scrap and recycles it and gets paid for it. You know, he he, he takes it to scrapyards and things like that. And every so often I'll steal one of these from him because the jumper wire on here is absolutely amazing. You know, there's an awful lot of jumper wire on these reels. And this came out of a microwave fan. So the little white fan that you see on the right hand side of a microwave, or usually on the right hand side of a microwave, um, when you open the back up, I think it's actually the left side when you when the microwave's facing the right way. But the little white fan anyway is what I take these from and this is the motor off it. So this this is what drives the fan. And I use these because this jumper wire is it's nice and thick, it's easy to tin. It carries a fair bit of current. I'm not I'm not not exactly sure on the rating and if ever I'm unsure I'll just double up on it. But generally I only use trace repairs on HDMI, for, HDMI ports and the 5 volt PS4 Pro connector. That's generally the only things I really do trace repair on because it's all I ever see in terms of damage because I realistically only work on consoles. So it's generally not high current and this is always usually sufficient for what I need it for. It's usually just data stuff which is being carried. So it really does come in handy and it lasts an awful long time. I've actually got two of these reels so that's probably good for a couple of years worth of trace repair. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to just add a little bit of solder flux to these pads here. I'm just going to place some solder flux there. So I'm going to take my soldering iron and some leaded solder, and I'm just going to try and retin these pads. So I'll focus on the pads that are still there for now. So this one here, like I say, is a ground pad. Uh, let's try and 
solder this connection here. So I want to try and create a fairly big pad here. Because I want to be able to reinforce it. And it's not actually going to let me create the pad, so that's fine. Right, so hopefully you can see that okay. Uh, unfortunately, I have to look at it from a phone screen, so I can't quite see it properly. My eyesight is absolutely shocking. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, let's see what we can do about getting this fixed, shall we? So I've tinned the pads. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to run a jumper wire to this pad here. So pad number four, I'm going to have to run a jumper wire from that. So first of all, I'm going to need to tin the actual jumper wire. So just take a little bit of jumper wire off the reel. We don't need a lot at all for this. I'm going to use this trace here to to actually tin it. There we go. Okay, so I'm actually going to come from up the top where the wire is. Because I'm going to get a better connection on it from there. So let's take a blade. And I just want to scrape away at the trace itself. Expose the copper. There we go. Okay. So now let's get that that via tinned. There we go. And now I'm just going to solder this jumper. There we go. Okay. So let's leave that position there for a minute. And I'm just going to trim it down. There we go. So we've got plenty of uh, excess wire to work with there when we pop the connector in place. So now what I want to do is I want to run another jumper from the first trace. There we go. Right, so let's clean up this area quickly. Okay, so I'm going to rub with the toothbrush and I'm only going to come down ways because of that jumper wire. Let's get rid of some of that gunk as well. There we go. So let's dry that off. Good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is where this trace re-meets itself here, 
I'm just going to scrape back at some of the coating because I want to solder the other end of this jumper to the other end of this actual trace. There we go, just expose a little bit of copper there. Add a bit more flux. Let's see if that's uh, soldered in. There we go. So basically what that's done now is that's just that's just made a bit of a better pad for the actual area. So next what I want to do is just get rid of the trace that's still attached to the connector. So I'm just going to run the soldering iron over that. And the soldering iron should drag it off the actual pin. There we go. So that's got rid of that. So now we're pretty much ready to get this connector connector back on. So now I'm just going to figure out which way it actually goes. Right. So I believe it's this way with the with the flat end of the flat side of the connector facing outwards. Uh, as far as I know, that's how it goes. Um, from what I can tell from some pictures online as well. Uh, I do tend to forget the orientation of these. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Well, actually, I've got to clean this up a little bit more because there's still a little bit of trace on one of those. So let's just clean that up a little a tad more. Ah, that's an idea of... of which way it goes let's just look at that where the trace is so that trace there belongs to the big pad uh, because there's only a little bit of that one missing whereas the other one was a full pad and uh, that gives us an idea so I was writing the orientation which is cool Okay, so that's cleaned up then. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start to solder these. So I'll start with the end connector. And just tack that into place for now. Uh, no, maybe not. Um, let's start with the third one then. All right, and I'll add, I'll add some flux afterwards. It's not a big deal to solder it without flux for now, as long as I solder it with flux later on down the line. Uh, actually, let's add some flux now, just to save doing it later. There we go. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and get that third pin soldered so as it's flush to the board. Uh, which I believe it is.
Okay, so what I'm doing on the back of the port where you can't see is the same as what I'm doing on the side that you can see. So I'm just uh, tacking those connections down, getting it in the right position so it's nice and secure. And then basically we can make sure that this isn't going to come back off. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a blob of solder to this pin here. Just try and create a nice big pad. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look perfect as long as it's functional and secure. And the reason I'm creating a nice big solder blob is just to make that port a bit more secure. So that basically the jumper wire is just acting as sort of a sort of a junction to allow me to create a bigger blob. Uh, rather than having to just run, run a single jumper wire and have it a very thin layer. I would rather just create a bigger blob. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's actually soldered and it's not going to come off in the future. Let's add some more flux. There we go. Okay, so now I can do the other side. So as you'll see there, I've already soldered this connection here. So this trace here, the ground pad, has already been soldered. But the one where we've got a jumper wire running hasn't. So what I need to do is basically take a pair of tweezers. Because the problem is this runs from the back, so we've had to run the jumper wire first. So I don't really want to be wrapping around the side of the connector. I'd rather have it running underneath where it's safe. It's not going to be pulled off accidentally. So then basically I'm just going to put it over the top of the connector itself and then solder it into place. So I'm going to tin the wire with the soldering iron itself by just light scraping. And now that the solder's started to adhere to it, we should get a nice solid connection on that. And now I should be able to just break off the excess using the tweezers. And that should be soldered. So this console theoretically now should work. However, I need to check and make sure that we're not shorted to ground anywhere. Uh, so there's a ground pad fairly close to the big 5 volt pad. And I just need to make sure that it's not bridged to ground. So what I'm doing now is I've got my multimeter and I've set the multimeter into continuity mode. Continuity mode is a mode that's going to go beep when we complete the circuit. So if we touch the two probes together, you'll see that we complete the circuit. If I touch here and here, it's part of the same copper trace, so it's completing the circuit. So that's going to tell me if there's a bridge between the 5 volt connector and ground. So this this copper trace here is all one big ground. So I'm going to pop one probe there on that trace. And the other probe on this pin here. And we don't have a short to ground. So that's good. That means that that one is soldered correctly. And let's just check and make sure that we get continuity against the pin here. And the top pin inside the connector. We do. And now I'm going to check ground against the second pin. That's good. I'm also going to check ground against the third and fourth, and we shouldn't hear a beep. So it shouldn't be bridged to ground. Which it's not. And now I'm going to check the edge of this wire here against the inside of the connector. So pin number four inside the connector. And that's connected beautifully. And now pin number three inside the connector to this one. Beautiful. Every single connection is soldered. So that's actually the easiest PS4 Pro repair I think I've ever done. Theoretically now, as long as there's nothing else wrong with this board, this board should work absolutely fine. Shouldn't be any issues whatsoever with it, so let's clean up. And that's not the most secure in the world. It's not as secure as I would like it.
and unfortunately at the moment I don't have any epoxy to put there so I'm just wondering how I can manage to get that a bit more secure so while I'm thinking about that I'm just cleaning up I can be a bit I can I can be a little bit rougher now especially if I'm holding the connector as well there we go so let's take a cotton swab and dry the area there we go so that's nice and clean now and the only thing that's really concerning is the fact that it's not completely secure now the problem is these connectors are the ones that don't have a ground pad on them and some of the ps4s i'm not sure which model number it is but some of the ps4s have got two side ground pads it's like a little it's like a metal pin that's indented into the actual connector and that allows it to be a bit more secure now these ones of course haven't got that so i can't secure it in place properly uh, so what i'm going to try and do i think is i'm going to try and reflow these joints with the soldering iron and try and make them as flush to the board as i possibly can so i'm not going to reflow number three number four where that jumper wire is running but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to push down on the connector and just try and reflow these joints just enough to bring bring it down as close to, as close as possible to the board itself so basically i want this as flush to the board as, as i possibly can because that way it's going to be as secure as it possibly can be I'm going to do the same for the other side. I push down on the board. There we go. That's a bit. That's a bit more secure, actually. That's a bit better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some more solder to this ground pad because the more solder, the stronger it's going to be. And um, that actually came out of alignment then, which is uh, a bit of an bit of an annoying thing that happens. Okay, that's better. So I push that down as strong as I can possibly get it. And I think that is as strong as this connector is going to go. That's fairly strong. I mean, as long as the customer's careful in the future, that should be absolutely fine. That is absolutely perfect. I don't think I could have got it to go any better than that. So let's clean up again for the final time. And then we can get to testing this board. So obviously if there was more damage, we'd have probably had to run more traces, but or more jumpers. But because it, this is very a very mild case indeed, it's not a very bad case as far as these connectors go. Right, so I need to make sure that this connector is actually going to fit inside. Or rather, I need to make sure the cable is going to actually go inside without bending those pins. How about tugging? Yeah, that's fine. Yep, yeah, okay, I am happy with that. Honestly, I'm happy with that. I think that's about as strong as this connector is going to get. Um, and to be honest with you, I mean, it's not it's not far off original. Like I said, these these connectors that on some of the boards, I think it's a newer, newer revision board, has a metal, a metal edge. And that solders directly to the ground plane and causes it to secure it to the board. It anchors it down. Um, but unfortunately we don't have that luxury here so there's nothing we can do about that because you know it's not it's not an option 
So I've got a little bit of overspill on the ground plane just on the edge of the board. So I'm going to get rid of that. It's only a couple of little blobs. Let's use some solder wick and the iron. Just get rid of those blobs. Beautiful. There we go. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so we're ready for testing. Uh, we might as well get this back in the chassis. So I'm going to reposition my cameras so you can watch the reassembly process and then we'll get this tested, shall we? There we go. So that's fully reassembled. Very nice indeed. So let's get a power cable. Okay. So let's pop in a power lead there. Uh, let's try and turn it on. Three, two, one. We have a blue light. Is it going to turn on? That is the question. Is it going to go to a white light or not? And yes, it has a white light. Fantastic. So I'm going to plug a HDMI lead in. That is brilliant news. Right then, so let me see if I can get this up on the screen. There we go. So that's up on the screen now, as you can see. Uh, yes, I'm using it on my computer I'm using a HDMI capture card and uh, yeah that's working so if I unplug this now you'll see that it's synchronized and you'll see it unplugs so that actually works perfectly uh, now the there we go it seems like it's in safe mode so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and grab a controller connect that up through USB and then we'll try and get out of safe mode uh, so hopefully this doesn't have to be factory reset but if it does then I'll let the customer know and obviously I'll do that uh, if if needed right so I'll be back shortly with a controller okay so let's pop the USB in and press the button and let's press cancel let's see if we can get out of safe mode by rebooting um, but by the looks of this, it's not got an operating system on it. So, I will contact the customer if that's the case. I'm just going to wait for it to reboot, obviously. And then, I will contact the customer um, and find out what the crack is. See what's going on with it, whether he knows about it or not. But this is the second one I've actually had recently that I've done a uh, power connector repair on it and it's ended up. The operating system has been corrupt which is a bit, a bit strange um unless he's put a blank hard drive in there i don't know right, so let's turn it back on 
and let's see what happens when we reboot so we're still on the camera app um, it comes up as a camera it's a USB camera um, I could have it running in OBS but it's a little bit finicky so I'll just run it on the camera app in Windows I'm just waiting for that to show up on screen now no that's not going to accept it right so what I'm going to do I'm going to stop the video for a minute I'm going to contact the customer, let them know that it's working, but it's not actually loading up the operating system. I'll see if he wants me to install it or whether he wants to do it himself. If he does, I'll do it for him. It's not a problem. It's not a big deal at all. Um, if he does want me to install it, it's only going to take five minutes. So, yeah, I'll resume the video shortly. Right, okay, so I've just spoken to the customer and he said that he was messing around with his hard drive and thought that it was because of the hard drive that it wouldn't turn on so basically what he did was he wiped the hard drive so I'm going to copy over the PS4 software and I'm basically going to reinstall the software for him because I want to see this console fully working and up and running so let's just grab the PS4 software Right, okay, ladies and gents, so we are should be just about ready to get this reinstalled now. Okay, so let's pop back over to the PS4. Okay. And there's that beautiful PlayStation logo. So we should come to the blue setup screen now. All being well. Run through the setup, test the disk drive, test the Wi-Fi. Make sure it's all working and uh, then we're good to go. Okay. So let's run through the setup. It's a little bit choppy because it's running through a HDMI capture card. It's not like we're uh, playing games or anything, just reinstalling the software. Right, so let's use Wi Fi, make sure that works. There we go. So that's all set up now. So let's pop a game in. I'm going to pop GTA 5 in. Just check make sure that the disk drive is working. So this disk is a little bit scratched up. But uh, it should still work. Uh, I don't like the sound of that. Hmm. It is recognising that the disks have been inserted and it is reading the disk, so um I mean to be honest I doubt very much the customer is gonna pay for a disk drive. I will let him know there's an issue. But if it requires a new disk drive, that's that's an awful lot of money. Right, uh so the disk drive's working. Um let's just test the storage make sure it's reading and yep and yeah that's it so let's pop the let's turn it off because I want to double check and make sure I connected those Wi-Fi antennas I don't think I have to be honest so I'm going to reconnect them Wi-Fi antennas because I, I'm pretty certain I haven't I will be honest I'm pretty certain I haven't all right just wait for that white light to go off here we go, so that's off, so now we can unplug it, 
I very much doubt I've connected those up. Uh, that's a bit annoying because I don't think that glue will have set yet. It's still a bit sticky. Oh, it has actually. From what I can see. And yeah, I didn't connect them up. Uh, no, it hasn't set. Uh, still, it looks better than having a, a blank spot, I suppose. Right, so let's just um, connect these antennas up. My mistake. I do make them sometimes. There we go. Uh, let's just make sure I've got everything else in. So the fans in, power connector disk drive, all of the disk drive ribbons. Yep, that's good. Okay, that's good to go. Right, okay, so let's just get this screw back in now that those antennas are in. We all make mistakes, we're all human. There we go. So there's one screw, and um, the second. Let's pop the hard drive caddy cover back on. There we go. Okay, so now it's time for my favourite part of the video. Let's do the summary. So. This console was sent in because the customer accidentally ripped the power connector off while cleaning and obviously when that happens you've got no 5 volts so you've got no standby power which means you can't turn the console on. So by soldering the connector back on it's nice and secure now. There wasn't too much damage on this board compared to what I usually see. But by soldering the connector back on, we're able to restore the 5 volt standby power and obviously get this console back up and running again. On top of that, there was an issue with the hard drive um, where the, there was no operating system installed. So, reinstalled that. Everything's working absolutely great. And I will let the customer know about the disk drive issue. And if he wants me to, I will take a quick look. Um, but that's for another time. Um, for now, this video has been going on for quite a long time and it's time to get it edited edited and uploaded so thanks very much for watching ladies and gents i hope you found this video helpful i hope you enjoy the content please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and leave me a comment down below let me know what you guys think if you want to see more trying to fix videos where i focus mainly on consoles but sometimes on other things too then be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you're notified every time that I upload. I'm trying really really hard to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you could subscribe it would really help, help the channel out and it would mean a lot to me. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching and until next time, see you later. Bye for now.